Hello everyone, how are you? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, wherever you are. So let's begin with the topic for today, which is <clears throat> related to the um, to the plexus in the emotional week of um, Pisces. And the topic is to be. So let's begin with this birth, with the idea of what this birth means and um, what it is to be. So the reason why today is the verb, the, the topic of to be, is because yesterday, speaking about unconditional love, uh, the one of the sentences that I said was um, to, to accept and love the world as it is, and not to expect for it to be what we want for it to be. So that's the clue for why we are going to speak today about to be. So the reason why we have to clarify this sentence is because we can fall in the mistake of thinking that if we have to accept the world as it is, it's because, um, so, so the question would be why we are doing this, why we should do anything if we have to accept the world as it is. <clears throat> so we have been speaking about the concept of surrender, about the void, about um, unconditionality, and all these concepts that we spoke about can kind of take us towards the idea that so we have to accept as it is and don't do anything. And that's it. But <clears throat> let's try to, to know why it's not exactly like that. So when I ask this to my higher self or my own self about um, why to do all this if we have to accept the world as it is, he answered me back saying, if you are willing for a baby to help a baby to become a conscious adult, does this mean that you cannot love and accept the condition of that person as a baby now? Meaning, you cannot love the baby as it is now, even if you know that that being will become something different in the future? So the example would say that if you have a baby, a kid, a child, and if you love that baby, that child, for what it is now, it doesn't mean that you cannot do things to help that baby, that kid, to become an, a person that is aware of himself, a person that, that can be conscious, that can be responsible. So loving that person, that baby, that kid, for what it is in that moment, as it is right now, as a baby, as, as a kid, loving that person will make that person in the future a person that loves, a person that respects. So the concept in the entire world would say, I cannot work for a future and better world by hating the world of the present. I have to accept and love the process that we are living today so I can teach the world to, to be someone that loves in the future. In this way of explanation, we can say, for example, that would you hate a baby that cries, that shouts, because 
that baby doesn't know exactly how to ask for something. The baby, the kid, is shouting, hungry, angry, and throwing things and whatever, and crying a lot because he's hungry. And that baby doesn't have the tools yet to tell you, please, mother, I'm hungry. Could you give me something to eat? The baby doesn't understand yet. It doesn't have the tools to ask it in that way. So the way it uses is to shout, to scream, to cry, to hit. Would you hate that baby because it does this and you know that it doesn't have the tools yet to do it properly? So now put that example in humanity. Humanity is like, like that baby that wants something but had no idea how to ask for it. So shouts, cries, depressed, fight, heat. And because of this, because of this, um, because of this uh, push <laughs> that, um, that the humanity is, is doing, does it mean that we have to hate humanity or the earth because they don't have the tools yet to know how to ask for it? If they don't have the ask, if they don't have the tools, so we need to teach how, we need to learn how. So this means that <clears throat> it's weird that we don't accept or we don't love the, the earth. I mean, when we say, um, when we say, so do we have to accept the wars, the hunger, the violence, all this as just that's the nature and we cannot do anything? No, what we have to understand is that to accept what humanity is now is to understand that humanity is through a process of learning, is through a process of finding the tools to do it better. <clears throat> so we have to learn how to do it. We are learning how to do it. So to, to accept how the world is, <clears throat> is not to do nothing about it. It's just to think about the world as that baby that is learning new ways. Hmm? So, oh, so something that someone said in the past, forgive them because they don't know what they do. For sure, many of you, as me, myself, has gone through processes in my life when I hit someone, uh, we, bite, we bite someone, um, we lie to someone, uh, we control someone, we use someone, we, we hit some, someone with something, we fight with, we fought with someone, all these things. And I'm not speaking about being an adult. I'm speaking also when you have one year old or two years old, and we naturally do that. This is natural. And nobody kills the baby. Nobody just threw the person away in the streets because, oh, it's useless. Because um, that person is wrong. No, we love the kid. We love the child. So we need to learn. We need to teach that child because the kids needs to learn. So usually the adult people say this this kid needs to learn better because it has a bad behavior, but it doesn't mean that you hate that kid. You teach that kid for it to become better because the kid doesn't have the tools. 
we all have gone through that. So why would be different when we start to think about humanity? Why would be different when we speak about the entire humanity? When humans fight for stuff, when they hurt others, when they lie to others and do all these horrible things that we are living, why instead of judging these people, we educate them? It's exactly the same, but in a bigger picture. So also for sure we have in the family some parents, moms and dads, that are not very aware of this process. So they are not very conscious about how to, to make a person to grow up. And this is the people that can stand their child, that they don't know how to handle them, that they even hate them because they would prefer for them to be different. So these parents are usually the ones that, speaking about humanity, they don't like humanity, they blame humanity. They just say that humanity is terrible and we are living the worst time. And I would, I wish we would have a better humanity. I wish I would have a different story because I hate what we have today. So it's like a father or a mother saying, I hate my child, I would wish to have a new one. So then you have the conscious parenting, which would be the persons that understand what are their kids going through. They understand the process of the child and how they are trying to get the tools to have their own life. But because of this, they also understand the limits. So a conscious parent is not the one that just say to the kid, do whatever you want because I understand your process. The conscious parent is the one that teach limits, that teach limits with love. So that person could understand how to move in the matter, but through education, which is to accompany that new person to discover the limits, the limits by itself. So this conscious parenting, talking about humanity, would be a society that help people to see their potentialities. This means not a society that blame or judge the others for what they are, but that teach them and educate them how to discover how good they could become. So now we go to the meaning of what it is to be. To be is the most ancient verb ever, because it's the one that is talking about what you are. It's the one that is talking about who are you in all this. So to be is the verb used to explain that you are transforming through different processes, through different levels, and even though you are always what you are. So you always refer to yourself as I am, as the verb am, to be. So this means that to be is the action that defines the whole process. For example, me here, I am just an aspect of to be, of the being that I am. I am just one aspect because today I am this, but tomorrow I can be different. And the day after tomorrow, I can be another thing. <clears throat> so the only thing constant in the existence is to be, to say I am. The rest are just parts of the process in which we understand ourselves. 
So all the others are different aspects of only one being that interprets itself as I am in every one of the steps of its evolution. So when you realize about the concept of to be as something that is constant, that changes only in its, in its aspects, you will realize that everything that exists is just part of the process. So we can understand in that moment that there is no one bad and no one good. There is nothing like to be good or to be bad. The only thing that exists is one being that is going through a process in which sometimes experience the bad and sometimes experience the good. When I realized that there is no bad being or good being, I realized that I cannot judge the aspect to be. I cannot say this is wrong or this is good. When you judge somewhere, someone or something for it to be like this, it means that we are just limited, that our mind is limited to all the options of what it means to be. Because for the universe, the only constant is to be. And you can be anything in any moment, in any place. So you cannot judge the people for what they are or the things for what they look like. You can only educate the aspects of the being that must be transformed. Can you see this? B, the word B comes from the Indo European language, Viewe, Viewe. Viewe means to exist, and exist means to stay out, to stay outside. That's what it means. Ex stare. That means to stay outside. Why is this? Because uh, for the ancient ones, to define the verb to be, something that is so subjective, so conceptual, is very difficult. For the first humans, they wouldn't describe etheric or ideal concepts. They would describe physical and objective stuff. So in this way, they would say, um, not this is Matthias, I am Matthias. No, Matthias is here. So the word be really was describing stay, to stay in one place, to stay, okay? So stay represents the occupation of a space and to be is the time, is the aspect of what this being is. So stay means to occupy a place, a site, okay? So for the ancient ones, a being was someone that was staying in one place, that occupied a space. Hmm? So this is why the verb dewe, to exist, means to exist outside, okay? To stay placed in one place out, dewe. Hmm? So now, to get this idea here, Uni, uni means one. So universe, that's the concept we are looking now. Uni is one. So it's only one thing that is, is in one place, that stays in the center, in the middle, is only one thing. But this unity, this unity, what it does is to get out from itself to stay outside. That is ex stare, which is to exist. Exist is to stay out. So the unity, which is one staying in the center, get out of itself to be in another spot, which is exist, stare, and then comes back, turning back to itself, 
and turn back is versus. Versus is the word in Latin for coming back or turning, turning to itself. So universe means that that thing, that thing that was in one place went out in another place to exist and then turns back to itself to the unity universe. Okay, you follow me? I hope you do. So now we will have here this path. The universe, in order to exist, divides itself from within to the outside. So it has two realities now, one within, one outside. That's why D in Latin means two. We have now two paths, one within, one outside. That's what we call diverse. Diverse, okay? So now what the universe does is that it has two point of views, one within that we call I, me, and the other one outside that I call am. So one is the subject and the other one is the verb, the action of the subject. So one center, I, that will expand itself into the am being many things outside. So once we have this, once we have this, the diversity, and we have these two point of view, the inside, the outside, the I and am, that means that the inside and the outside reflect each other and come back again once and again, creating the first verb, the first action of the self. So that's what we call the first verb of the universe. I am. That's verse. The verse. Yes, the verse is like a sentence. It's like the first verb that you are using to exist. Hmm? I am. The verse which means to come back to you, to, ref to refer to yourself, okay? To refer to yourself. So now, the verse I am will propose something to the universe. Through diversion, through the diverse, will create many options of itself, creating different options. So now, when this being looks for many options, we find versions of the oneself, different versions of one, of I am. So a version is like a fractalization of the self. It's like the self fractalizing many times, bending itself again and again over, its, this, over the same image, creating a new version of what I am. Okay? So this, is what will create the concept of diversity. Diversity here down. What is diversity? It's only one being that in the unity, it, get, it got out from itself creating diversity, the diversion of itself. And through the verse, I am created many other versions that we call diversity. So from the unconscious mind, Diversity is separation. Why? Because the unconscious, remember from the pre previous videos, is positive and negative. It's moved by the currents of the energy of positive and negative. So that's why we believe that there is something that is good and something that is bad in this diversity. So from the conscious point of view, We call that integration, and integration is based in eternity. And who is the only one eternity? In eternity, the I am, the being. Do you remember this? From the unity, the B, to B, comes the two constant of the universe, the diversion. The first diversion is space and time. Okay, so the two constant that diverse. So this is the universe, to B, and then it divides into diversion, 
diverse in two lines of space and time. So now in the middle, there will be a vibrational wave. So the vibrational wave is the one that will emerge from the core of the universe, the unity, and will go through the constant of time and space. So the vibration will create energy, and that energy will create matter. So in the crosses between time and space through where the wave is moving, we will have the condensation of all this energy into matter, creating a star, a sun, a planet, a person, a tree, whatever. Okay. So this brought me to different versions of myself. So this will say, I am, I am, I am. And each one of them find themselves in a different time and a different space. So each one of these individuals will refer to itself as an aspect of the I am. So even if they refer to themselves as I am, each one of them will be like this here, will be in high vibration, and this one will be in low vibration. So this means that those under this line will be living very density processes, and the ones up this line will be living like subtle processes, much more lighter. And I'm not speaking about different dimensions here, I'm speaking about different people. You may call this mom, son, dad, or mom, dad, son, whatever. You choose the people. So now the one that is up here maybe can look down and say, I can stand this too, because they are in a such low vibration that I can't just stand them anymore. They are like inferior to me. But when you say so, you are so focused in this lower vibration that you are not realizing that you will fall down sooner or later because of that judgment. So what we have to acknowledge about this is that this position here is not constant. It's not all the time like this. It's a wave in constant change. So this means that it's part of a process that this person exists. So it's not something determined that this person is like this. It's not forever. It's just an expression of the being in a certain time, in a certain space. So now, when we have these different stages here, I might think that these are different people so I kind of judge the position of these people, but really they are just expressions of only one. So when I turn back to myself to become one again, suddenly I realize that each one of this I am are only different expressions of myself. So I can accept now the processes they are living through because they are my own processes. So I become unconditional. I understand the process. I know that all of them is me, I am. So the question to be or not to be is not determined by the time and space, is determined by the choice I make according to my vibration. So this means to be or not to be, means that besides that is a choice of vibration, besides that is a choice of vibration, when I become aware, 
I cannot say this is what I am and this is what I am not. Because when I become the whole, I am the everything. I am all of it. I am. So it's impossible to say this is not me or this is not part of me because I am everything. It's only me living through different processes of learning about myself. And because of this is how we reach the essence. Essence means the quality of being. The quality of being is when you realize that everything that exists is part of oneself. So when we stop judging each other, when we stop blaming each other, when we stop believing that everything is separated and we understand that we are all living different processes and that it's myself that is nourishing through that, those processes is when I am connecting to the essence of things. When I realize that everything that happens is just me in different states, in different versions. Everything that exists is only a version or many versions of oneself, of the I am. In order to wrap this up, we have to realize that what we are now is just a vibrational state of what I really am. And this is why we can understand, I accept the world as it is, not willing for it to be, to expect for it to be what I expect for it to be. So let's go to the alignment. The vibration for today is here. The statement for today is, I am the will that connects. Let's begin with alignment.
Sorry, take deep breaths. Focusing in every inhalation and exhalation. I start to perceive how the energy of my body, my emotions, expand like a spider web, connecting to each person that I feel attached to, that I feel connected to emotions. I perceive the emotional network that beholds me here and now. And I perceive all these emotions flowing through this network towards me. I become aware that I am all those feelings, that I am the network to where they move through, that I am all the reflections from where they come from. It doesn't matter if it is good or bad. I recognize that I find myself connected and being all those who are attached to me in this network. I accept the world as it is. I accept everyone as they are. And only in this way I can connect with my essence. For I am everyone. 
I am the world. And this is how I resound in the network that I am. I am the will that connects. I am the will that connects. I believe for I am. to expand from my plexus 
all this consciousness throughout all the body, all my cells. To my being, coming back here and now, each one at its own time. Thank you everybody for being here as always and see you tomorrow at the same time.